Aloha and mahalo for tuning in to tonight's Dokoga TV. On this episode, we continue our Kyushu, Southern Japan, Saigo Takamori video diary series. The non-stop travel group and Team Dokoga TV started our day in Kagoshima and took a 15-minute ferry ride to Cherry Blossom Island, also known as Sakurajima. Our time here on this former island, now technically a peninsula due to its constant eruptions and volcanic activity, would start with an unforgettable lunch that features yet another Kyushu delicacy, Kagoshima beef. We just took the ferry from Kagoshima to Sakurajima, where we are right now. And of course, lunch is to be had, and we're doing steak. Oh, you hear that? That's a nice sound. So here uh, on Sakurajima, of course the volcano's still live. We're gonna be going up there to the lookup points, check it out. Also doing Ashiyu, which is a wonderfully relaxing outdoor foot bath after we have our lunch here. Wagyu. So with the steak, of course we're gonna have rice, we have miso soup, we actually have salt, you can try it with, and then wasabi, also a very common, you have steak here in Japan. Good amount of vegetables and the sauce. Sharon's trying to steal my steak. I, I see. It's the best sound, yeah. It sounds delicious. It smells delicious. Uh, based on the texture here against my chopstick, I know it's going to be very, very moist and tender. First, actually, just by itself. Purity of the meat here. Sakurajima, itadakimasu. Mm. Mm hmm. Magically gone. Disappeared. No longer with us in this lifetime. So, because we have different dipping sauces, I will try it with this. Like a tare type of sweet, a little bit of salty sesame seed in here. And this guy here has a little bit of extra fat on it, which is also a great thing. Oh, my doctor's not watching. But with salt, Oh, and that just completely melted. Um, no, I do not eat wasabi. I'm like one of those people that have sushi, wasabi nuki, because I'm a child and I can't really eat spicy stuff. But I do know that when you have steak, really good steak, a little bit of wasabi. Mm hmm. Mm. Wasabi is very light. Not spicy at all, it's fresh, you can tell it's fresh. How are we feeling about that bite? Holy shit. Very tender, mm -hmm. very juicy. Very juicy, very nice, very nice. Food this good needs to be savored. Savored. Appreciated. And appreciated. I agree, you should be on TV more. <laughs> I, you know, in fact, you can have my job and I'll, and I'll eat. And all right. <laughs> I think the only thing I can think of you could ask for is maybe a little bit of sake to go with the lunch or more steak. That's the only two things. Uh, we got to keep this a, a G-rated tour. <laughs> <laughs> true that, true that. How's it going so far? Very good. I was trying to cut the fat off because we've been eating so much that I need to make sure I don't <laughs> overdo it and, and gain 10 extra pounds when we get back. But didn't you read the disclaimer in your, um, your travel guide from Nonstop Travel? There's a 10 to 15 pound mandatory weight gain uh, when you come on these tours. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we are in an alternate reality. So in Japan, 5, 10, 15 pounds, it doesn't go back with you. It disappears as soon as you get through customs. Is that a promise? That's a, a theory. Can't rely on theory because then I won't have any clothes that will fit me. Spoken like a true scholar. Spoken like a true scholar. Please enjoy a piece of steak. I would like your reaction. Very tasty. I've never had wasabi with steak, but I'm gonna have it again. You are an adventurer. I did not get to the hot plate in time. I see there's only one piece of steak left. I gotta eat my wife's steak. <laughs> That's, you have a wonderful wife who yeah. would share this, this yeah, steak with you. It was lobster and sashimi, it's even better. Oh, okay. Then Polly will be sitting over here too. <laughs> have a piece of steak uh, for our audience back home. Look at that, look at that. Oh, okay, okay we're going for that sauce. And it's in. Mm -hmm. 
This one is tender, juicy. Okay. The sweetness of the sauce adds to it. Kind of counteracts the wasabi that I put on earlier. You must be on Food Network. That was a very wonderful Food Network type of description. Did you follow the other strategy? I noticed this comment on this table where you cook everything at one time, or did you go piece by piece? Well, I started one at a time. Then I noticed everybody else putting everything. Oh. And to me, that was a better idea. That is a good idea. I did it wrong, too, from the start, but I'm going to follow that as well. Uh, thank you for sharing your, your insight and your very Food Network, very Gordon Ramsay description of the wonderful steak. We'll be catching up more here on Sokoto GMI as well as having a wonderful Kaiseki dinner tonight. Back at the hotel, folks, take care and aloha. It'd be impossible to top a magical steak eating experience like the one we just had, but lounging around and soaking our feet and legs in Nagisa Park's 300 foot long outdoor ashiyu or foot hot bath, yeah, that's a pretty fantastic follow-up. Continued adventures here in the island of Sakurajima, right offshore of Kagoshima. As you can tell, everyone is enjoying outdoor foot onsen. Right down the line, you can see here. And I like the fact that everyone has white legs just like I do. Now they don't know, we're gonna release eels here any second, and they're gonna get some good foot treatment, maybe a little bit of nibbles, clean off that dead skin. Oh, it's so deep. It's so deep, but it's so good. Ah, oh, that feels the, that feels delicious. You should all come and join it and participate. This feels great. <laughs> Folks, you guys having a good time? Yay! You guys want some sake to go with that? Yay! We don't have any sake, though, sorry. But you're still enjoying it nonetheless. Oh. 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 Oh, the best. oh, four times, five. No, no, it's really good. Wow, very therapeutic. Your legs could be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And this is really good for hairy legs. Huh? Why? It's going to get curly. Why? Am I? Because I'm the photographer for the tour. And I don't want to take off my socks. Unreal. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you go from being really kind of shocked to, yeah, numb. You, you just go to numb and then, you're, then you start to turn red. Usually the water makes the people more beautiful, but I'm already beautiful. That's why I don't need it. Thank you. It's good. It's really good. Sakurajima's earliest recorded eruption dates back to the 8th century, and the largest, most recent eruption was in 1914, which resulted in a 10 billion ton lava flow. Right now we are in Sakurajima. That's right. This is still an active volcano here. That's right. And we used to it. So we are not surprised to see mountain erupting. This is a very, very regular scenery. I've seen it on the news where people actually have to wear covering for their face. That's right because of ashes and everything. Have you, have you been there? Have you ever been here when that's happened? Mm -hmm. And actually, I had a tour last year or two years ago, too. And uh, actually, we saw the mountain, and then I got the volcanic ashes from the sky. And we are so excited. Everybody's just so optimistic, and then I was so excited, too. I have to admit wow. My asthma would be excited. Now, Kimi, so uh, Sakurajima, mm -hmm. I know 1914 was it the last big? That's right, eruption? big one. And almost every two years or so recently, it erupted. And then uh, that means we are now in a so called active period of the earth. And now, uh, very used to it actually, first of all. Ah. But uh, there are uh, special evacuation zones. I see. And then you're explaining there is a structure right there in the middle of the... That slow down the speed of lava or much flow. What are some of your favorite things or your system either dishes or, or features of this city? Oh, okay. It's a kind of shochu. What is shochu? My favorite drinks, one of my favorite drinks actually, that is distilled alcohol made of wheat, buckwheat, rice and so on. The alcohol content of shochu is a little bit higher. Are, are we going to try shochu on this trip? Yeah, we should. Mm -hmm. I fully endorse higher alcohol content. Oh, sounds good. It, it gets us there faster. We're going to continue our journey across Sakurajima and then back to Kakushima. Yay! 
The non-stop travel group and I thoroughly enjoyed the Kagoshima beef and foot bath relaxation on Sakurajima. In continuing our quest for further serenity and inner and outer peace for that matter, it made all the sense in the world to me drinking some type of refreshing shochu would be a great way to top off our afternoon. And that's exactly what was on our itinerary, as our next stop would be to the very historic, world-renowned and celebrated Satsuma Shuzo Meijigura. Kagoshima happens to be the largest producer of sweet potato as well as shochu. The harvest season and brewing time frame is from September through December, resulting in enough shochu for the year, which is then distributed in Japan and around the world. We are the one of the most popular and famous shochu distillery in Kagoshima Prefecture. This is the oldest distillery among our company, and it was constructed around 100 years ago. That's why we named this kura Meiji Gura, because of the, at that time we had Meiji Era. Uh, we are now in Makurazaki, which is famous for Bonito, and also Typhoon. <laughs> Name of Shoujo is Satsuma Shiranami. That means the white wave in Satsuma area. And uh, our company made the potato beer for the first time in Japan. Oh, you are VIP guest, that's why please taste this beer too. Hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are making sweet potato shochu only from September to December because of the, that period is the harvest season of sweet potato. We make shochu for the four months and then the, they keep it for the year. Meiji Ura has a special festival at the end of October in celebration of the newly distilled shochu. Here we can see various Japanese kanji or calligraphy from nearby schools acknowledging this very special shochu event. This Edoe group even got to see Mejiura's secret room, the special stash of shochu storage and study. There are over 20,000 barrels here kept for 10 years. Testing is done frequently to analyze the quality and ensure the best taste. Even the jars that store the shochu are extremely important as this is also a factor that can affect the shochu's flavor. Our non-stop travel group was so thankful for their in-depth shochu visitation, we had a few members that wanted to assist with the 10-year-long study and taste analysis, willing to volunteer their time and taste buds, insisting on doing their part to ensure Kagoshima was well represented. Anytime we do any kind of coverage of a shuzo, a brewery, of course, we've done many sake ones before. Uh, this is the first time that I've actually got to see a shochu one. It's a Satsuma Shuzo. And as you can tell behind us, a lot of activity, a lot of happy faces, because there's a lot of sampling going on. So let's take a look and check with our nonstop travel group how they're enjoying the shochu so far. Now, I notice that you have in your hand a, a golden, beer. looks like golden juice. It's beer. It's beer? Beer. Shochu beer that they have here. It's How many have you had so far? I can't count. <laughs> Am I red? I can tell that we get along just fine. <laughs> Japanese Light is nomiyasui, easy to drink. Oh, yeah. Very easy. It's going down very smoothly. Oh, we got the, we got the, the sigh of happiness. Oh. We're in heaven. I got to tell you, you're selling it really well. We're in heaven. <laughs> We're in heaven? <laughs> I, I too would like to be in heaven soon, sir. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Great. I started with the non-alcoholic and then uh, I worked myself to this one which is a little strong but I heard the strongest one is right there so I have my eye on that one. Okay, so you must be an athlete because in the athletic world we call this conditioning. Yes. You are a true athlete and Olympiad. I just want to add that. First time I've ever actually covered a shochu uh, brewery so very, very excited to be here. Now I'm following her training. Come by. Cheers. Smiled it too. It's strong, but it's smooth. It's still permeating its way through my internal organs, and it's very nice. Very nice. You know, we do want to let people know 
back home watching this episode of the Hoga TV, uh, as well as everyone in Nonstop Travel's office, that oh, okay. we work really hard here in Japan, don't we? Oh, we work so hard. T tireless hours and time that's spent to make sure everyone has a good tour experience. Exactly. That's right. We want to make sure everybody's enjoying their tour. This is our research to make sure that work goes well, right, Sharon? Yes. Come by. Come by. Oh. Isn't that good? Oh. oh it's very candy goodness. I love it. This is my fifth cup. Five? I got to catch up. <laughs> this is my brother from another mother, Maurice Yamasato. We've been uh, spending a lot of quality time here in Japan. To Erin and Natsumi, the girls, Sophie, Leah. Hello from Kagoshima. The Satcho Sao is very, very informative. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, yes. I, was, I was interested because they have ties to Okinawa. You mentioned the oh. sweet potato came from Okinawa oh. and, and cultivated, so I thought that was interesting. Yeah. We learn a lot here on these Dokoga TV drinking tours, believe it or not. I see, Maurice, you have in your hand a bag of quality goods. This is a top, the best shochu, top of the line shochu. When something comes in a completely black box, normally that means you're in for a VIP experience. So, Maurice, what was it about this one that you liked? Well, I asked, what, what's the best for for the company, mm -hmm. uh, the reserve that they have. And I bought this for, for my friends in Hawaii that I can share oh. with. And of course, I bought one for myself. <laughs> Many bottles are opened and samples poured. Many more bottles are purchased in wanting to contribute to Kagoshima's economic growth. As smiles started to widen, eyes started to glaze over ever so slightly, and speeches started to slur, it was probably a good time for us to leave and, of course, extend our sincerest thanks to the Satsuma Shuzo Mejigura family for welcoming us here and for warming us up with their unforgettable shochu. We love shochu! The 808 group continued our trek through the Makurazaki city area of Kagoshima. Makurazaki is the top producer of katsuobushi, also known as the dried fish flakes, which are the key ingredient in Japanese dashi or broth. I'll be honest, other than shoveling it into my mouth while enjoying the rice or tofu it happens to be sitting on, or watching it dance on piping hot takoyaki, or gulping it in miso soup, it never occurred to me how much time, work, and effort go into these very flavorful flakes. Believe it or not, these wood-like blocks that our instructor is holding is katsuobushi, or dried fermented skipjack tuna, also known as bonito. The bonito, in its more familiar fish-like form in the very first phase of making katsuobushi, is separated into four fillets, heated and then deboned. Each filet is filled with fish paste and then dried for a month. Mold is added to the process and aged for another four to five months, resulting in the rock-like, block-like katsuobushi seen here. The hardened fish is then cut or grated and the shavings have been providing flavor for Japanese cuisine since the 1600s. Our nonstop travel group took turns making and sipping the freshly made dashi and got to enjoy an amazing lunch topped off with the savory makurazaki flakes. So this particular segment and adventure started off yep. with us learning about the importance of bonito, yes, right? that's right. And uh, now it's the best part, uh, the part we get to eat. This is dashi tazuke. Yay. Now the difference being mm -hmm. we're pouring the dashi mm -hmm. that we just learned how to make. Yes into this bowl of rice mm -hmm. and, and sashimi. Mm -hmm. And I see so much goodness and color here. Yes. Look at that. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I feel bad eating. Not mm -hmm. too bad. Yeah. I feel a little bad <laughs> because the uh, this presentation is just fantastic. Oh, some. it looks good. Is that good? Yeah. I want to get looks all good. the colors and scattered then, about. And also, this is a uh, bonito taste senbei. Bonito senbei? OK. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Oh, see. Very light flavor. Mm -hmm. I can taste the fish. Mm -hmm. The dashi is not too overpowering, mm -hmm. but there is that, of course, mm -hmm. the 
the fresh bonito flavor that we yeah, learned about. Yeah. I do like the texture when it, of course, for people that are familiar with Wachazuke back home, having a dashi in here with the rice really helps bond the flavors yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. I say I'm loving our time here and um, getting to know more of the locals and more local flavors and appreciating you know, what they do here in Japan. So continue lunch and wish you're here with us. Of course, it's a non-stop travel, Dohuga TV adventure. More to come, folks. Aloha. Team Dohuga TV just wanted to let you know for more updates, news, and some cool contests, please follow us online.